Hey, it's Greg Otten here with MaritimeGardening.com. Today I'm going to show you how I build one of these uh, log beds using pegs and logs. I've shown you how to do hookah culture beds, and now I'm going to show an even simpler approach, one I alluded to in a previous podcast. Uh, the easiest, quickest way I know how to make a very good, productive garden using materials that cost almost nothing and are easy to source. Uh, um, actually, this entire garden here was built with materials I source for free. So, have a watch, stay tuned, and let's see how this goes together. Alright, so here we are. Uh, I got a space here where I did the Ruth Stout garden. Uh, if you look at those videos, I built some gardens here just by throwing. I uh, threw down manure, I threw down hay, and I stuck. I threw down manure, stuck potatoes in the manure, uh, <laughs> and. Uh, uh, they grew, but anyway, I want to make something a little more permanent with uh, some sides to keep the weeds from migrating in and so on. Uh, the first thing you need to do if you're going to be building one of these, there's different ways to put them all together, but um, I find using pegs to be the cheapest, easiest, quickest way. And, and the pegs last about as long as the logs last if you're worried about things rotting. And these are just old uh, stakes. That I use these to stake my beans and tomatoes and stuff like that this year. So I'll just, uh, in, in the winter, when there's nothing else to do, I'll hike out in the woods and, and uh, harvest some uh, little spruce trees to do this. So I'll do a video on that and for anyone getting bent out of shape over the fact that I'm taking spruce trees. if When you watch that video, you'll see that I'm not really destroying the world by doing that. Uh, I'm basically just thinning out trees that are too tight anyway, that would have died anyway, or, or in some cases are even dead. Anyway, a little bit uh, on axe safety here. You notice how I hold the stick on an angle and I chop straight down. See how the stick is on an angle, but the axe is straight down, and I've choked up, I'm holding it very close to the head. That way you get the most control. Um, so that, the reason you, you, you do it that way, and this is for people that don't have any experience with axes that see the video and run a run out and grab an axe and start using it, is, is that if anything goes wrong, the axe is going to go straight down into the stump. It's not going to glance off and go into me some way. Because uh, I think if you watch that uh, hugo culture bed video, uh, you can see from the uh, uh, some of the uh, stuff I'm doing there that the axe is uh, ridiculously sharp. and. Uh, uh, sharp axes are safer than dull axes, but they're very dangerous nonetheless if you miss. <laughs> so uh, axe safety is important, uh, knowing how to use your axe and you know how to hold it and so on. So uh, yeah, we just finished uh, cutting those babies up. And uh, I don't know, I think I cut about two dozen pegs. I'm not sure if that's exactly how many I need, but pretty darn close for a... Uh, this is a 4x8 bed just using uh, old dead logs. Uh, so we got all our pegs, we got our axe, um, basically got everything we need. So I just uh, took a measurement to, to make sure that the bed was far enough apart from the other bed that I could get my lawnmower between the two of them. I don't know what that is, maybe two feet, give or take. Um, I've tried narrow spaces between beds, and uh, it's a bit of a pain. I mean, you're, the more narrow the space is between your bed, the more gardening space you have. But you have to sort of twist your body sideways to do everything. You can't face square. You can't square your body up to the garden when you're actually working in the garden. And it's a bit hard on your back. It's not the most comfortable thing if you're doing anything that takes any kind of time, um, especially if you had any sort of uh, bad back issues. So. Um, I've got beds that are about, you know, 16 inches apart. Uh, it's a bit tight and it's really not the most comfortable, although it is a good and efficient use of space. I like two feet or even three feet. That seems even better. Anyway, so all these pegs are lined up and uh, um, the pegs are downhill of where the log's going to be. Uh, that way it'll just sort of roll into them, right? That's why I've put them like that. Uh, here I am with a uh, pickaxe just uh, breaking up the bit of sod that's there and also leveling out a little bit. It's, it's a bit of a, a grade here and uh, I don't care too much about things being perfectly level. That's not a big problem for me, but I do want them somewhat level and it is a bit steep here. So I'm just taking uh, some of that. There's a, a, a peg that's furthest to the right if there's a bit of a, a dip there where it, it goes up dramatically about six inches or so and that's where I just made that gesturing motion uh, there's a huge rock there that probably weighs three or four hundred pounds and it's not coming out and it's right below the surface 
Um, uh, what are you going to do? <laughs> I'm not taking that thing out. So that area of that of that particular guard will probably not be the most productive area. I mean, th that log is basically sitting on that rock, and it is huge. Um, it's uh, yeah, I could probably get my arms. I'd be lucky if I could get my arms around it, based on just feeling around with the pickaxe and stuff like that. So here I got my chainsaw, and I'm just gonna uh, square off these two dead uh, dead logs just to make sure they're the same length. I mean, I'm not being overly fussy here. I don't really care, um, but you know, it's nice to have things a little bit uh, consistent. Um, so that's all I'm doing. Just really low tech, just squaring those up and squaring off the ends. There we go, perfection. So uh, I picked the 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 log that you can tell by looking at it. It's the lower the log on the bottom there is birch. Um, and that's the bigger, heavier log. That thing probably weighed well over 100 pounds. Um, uh, anyway, that, that's the bigger, larger in diameter one. So I'm putting that one downhill because uh, it'll be high. It's, it's higher than the one that's uphill. So they'll be roughly level. That's how it'll all work out. So here I'm just laying down the pegs for the uh, other side. And. Uh, these pegs, um, I'm actually I'm putting a couple pegs on the inside because the log will roll into them. So the pegs I'm putting in here are not uh, going to be on the outside of the log like the previous ones are going to be on the inside of the log because I'm, right now I'm facing uphill. There's a slight grade. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's a lot easier to just do it this way than to try to grade the whole thing by hand. Just, you just sort of think around that and do it the easiest way you can. So I'm just putting two pegs down there and I'll take the log and throw it. Uh, so it just sort of rolls down into them. Then I'll put the pegs on the outside. Uh, and that should stay. Uh, just just judge it by eye that it's square with the other log. Um, now I'm getting the ends uh, organized here. Just lay them out and uh, probably just use the chainsaw to cut them off. These are just rotten trees. These are just dead trees that were dead standing on one of my neighbor's lawn. Uh, we were putting our kids on the bus one morning and uh, the neighbor just said, you know, do you want, uh, you want some trees? Because <laughs> those ones are a little bit close to my house. So I went down the weekend and cut those down and, and brought them up uh, to my property. And uh, yeah, it's just great having neighbors. So I just fired that into the woods there. <laughs> I just love having uh, uh, It's just a wild sort of foresty area there. So anything that doesn't belong, that's organic, just fire it in the old woods. Um, so I'm just going to peg those in place. Uh, a huge rock there that came out. Um, there, if you can, you can tell by looking at the uh, end logs that they're not all uh, on the same level as the side logs. So what I'm doing here is, with my shovel, I'm scooping out clumps of sod, and I'm going to stick that under the logs to just level them up a bit, almost using it like a mortar. Uh, and because it's sawed, it'll sort of grow into and just tie everything. It's, it's amazing, you know, when you're working with these natural materials using these really primitive approaches, uh, how simply and easily things fit together. When you really, um, you know, when, when you just I mean, you're kind of out there playing, right? You're just playing with the materials, figuring out, and your mind just starts seeing easy ways to solve problems, easy ways to put things together. It's uh, it's really a nice uh, process to be engaged in. Uh, I really enjoy it. I, I uh, if you're wondering why I. Uh, doing this with a voiceover, it's because the wind, <laughs> as usual, <laughs> made uh, uh, recording uh, while I was working on it uh, impossible. Also, this allows me to speed the whole thing up. This whole garden probably took about half an hour to make. I mean, I'm not counting the time it took to go gather the, the different materials, but with all the materials laid out there, um, uh, including you know cutting up the pegs, <laughs> probably took about half an hour. Um, so that's not much, but this video is, you know, only about 15 minutes long because uh, I'm doing everything at double speed, right? Um, so that's the good thing about doing a voiceover. You can speed things up and you can still, you can see the whole thing to come together, start to finish. Um, so uh, it's a good way to do it. So now I've got all my 
um, pegs in, I, I think, or, or close to all their pegs in. Uh, nothing's really going to move around too much. Uh, I think the last one there was that end, so I'm, I'm pegging that in place, and then once I get the pegs in place, I'm going to uh, jam some sod underneath and around that that piece to really hold it in place. See how I'm moving the, those are pieces of sod that I dug up. Uh, it's just a, it's such a simple, unbelievably easy way to put it all together. So yeah, I'm like, oh, I need a bit more sod, so I'm just throwing that around. And all around the edges of the garden, you're going to see in a minute, I'll just sort of kick sod into the corners. And that really uh, makes the garden, uh, it's remarkably solid. And a garden like this, using these sort of rotten trees and this sort of stuff, it'll hold up. I, I've got some that are really starting to disintegrate in my main garden. Uh, I would say a minimum of, uh, let me think now, it's 2017, a minimum of three years, and maybe probably a maximum of ten years, something like this will hold up, so, you know, um, I'm building the entire garden, but if I have to replace a, a log here or there, it's really not that big a deal. I think I, I actually sh filmed some other footage of me repairing one of my beds in my main garden. This is outside the enclosure, um, where I had a, one of the logs completely rotted out. Um, so uh, that video will be out in a week or so. Uh, I'm doing something else, but I, I just realized that, that one little piece was uh, rotten. So uh, anyway, so all I'm doing here is just breaking up. That's that super hard rock, that area there. We're right around where my right foot is, there's a huge rock. But anyway, I'm just going around, uh, poking around here, uh, looking for uh, uh, rocks or just smoothing things out and grading it a little bit so it's somewhat level. Uh, I mean, you could say, well, I thought you were an hotel gardener. I am, but, you know, once uh, once the garden's made, I don't, I'm not going to tell this, I'm not going to be doing any of this again, but the first time you make the garden, uh, I find you can speed things up a little bit by just loosening up the soil and breaking it up here and there. Um, if you put a heavy mulch down and soil and all that stuff, the, the soil underneath will, will break up and will become loose. But it takes uh, years for that to happen. So, uh, you know, you, you can spend 10 minutes with a pickaxe and take years off of that process. So for me, that makes sense. So now everything's shored up and everything's solid. Uh, so I'm just throwing some manure. And you can see how, how solid the box is. I just drag those over the sides and the sides don't move or anything. And over time, the logs become uh, more and more uh, solidified in, the, in their position. They, they really do just sort of glue or grow together. It's kind of remarkable how how uh, well this works and how quick it is, and of course, unbelievably cheap. Uh, so that's all manure. I think I got some more manure there. This whole bed is just going to be manure and hay, I believe. Just manure and hay. So I'm going to put a good. Basically, I'm going to cover. Fill it up to the top, and it's about six inches high, and I don't, you know, really don't need to go much higher than that for anything, uh, in my opinion. Uh, so I'm getting a good, because you know, manure you can go, you can, it's gonna go, it's gonna go down a little bit, right? Manure is mostly air. <laughs> There's a lot of air there, so as that breaks down, it'll go, it'll lower. Um, so anyway, I'm just leveling this all out, and then uh, I'm gonna throw my hay on top of it. Because what I want to do is set this up to be uh, kind of like a big compost bin, right? I mean, this is November. I'm not planning. I'm, pl I'm not going to plant anything in this until uh, sometime next spring. I'm not sure when I'm going to plant here. Maybe pumpkins. I'm not quite sure. It's outside the garden enclosure, so there's only so many things that I can plant here that the animals won't get at. But so by putting this hay on heavy, I'm going to put I think two good sized bags of hay on there. Um, by putting all this hay on, I'm going to allow it to heat up and really get cooking under there and hopefully that will uh, allow that manure to continue to break down um, over what's left of the fall and early next spring hopefully it does well i'll check it in the middle of the winter to see if it ever does freeze we'll see if it should. most most of my beds freeze in the winter but sometimes they don't i've noticed ones with heavy hay don't seem to freeze sometimes I'm um, just, I, there was a little bit of, little area over there with, with not enough manure to do anything, so I just decided to throw that on there. Um, what, the, what, the, what the heck, why not, right? Um, but that's, uh, 
pretty much uh, it for the garden. I'm not going to lay on it like I did the other one, but uh, that's pretty much all you need to do to put that together. So um, anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed this content. Uh, if you if you did, please subscribe. Check us out on Facebook. Um, check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. And uh, until next time, get out there, get at it, and have fun in your garden. See you next time.